Guys, I gotta ask you something. This that looks D-Wade? like a familiar face right you out look here. Like D-Wade. Wait a minute. Yeah. Tell me what, what is this? Well, back back home we call that product. Okay, what is we, we would call that little product. What is that? that that's Hollywood. That's, he's an A-list star. What is this right now here? That, that could be some some uh, Denny uh-oh. Terrio type. Uh oh. You know, disco. <laughs> you know, but it's a good look. That's D Wade. I ain't got nothing but love for D Wade. <laughs> The way, no, dude, this is a final. You got to bring it. You can't come in there half step. That's a clear path foul. <laughs> Stu, is that a finable outfit right there? <laughs> oh, I love it. And that's a good way to come right out. 20 point deficit, but there's so much time left in the first half. You still got five minutes to go here. And what they've been doing great all series long is their ability to come out and get something out of timeouts on the sideline or the baseline. Durant into the corner for Clay. Good job by Kyrie to get out there. Kyrie getting physical with Curry. Off ball contact there. Former net against former net. I tell you, he has just perfected his little mid range. Does just enough with the size and then Jefferson being bigger, but he's able to create some space with a little nudge there, and he is automatic with that shot. I'm going to get a dirty look from our researcher, Justin Nixon, if I don't give you this stat. The lead was 20 for Cleveland a moment ago. That's the eighth time all season that the Dubs have been down by 20 or more. Eight Mm. times all season. Steph didn't want to take it all the way to the rim, but it's put back in there by Draymond Green. And Draymond still fighting, still feisty, playing the high-level activity that he's going to have to understand. And there's a ton of time with his explosive offensively as this Warrior team is. Kyrie, crossover on Durant, up with the left hand. He is special. And coach, it may not, or Stu, it it may not be orthodox in terms of lacking in the ball movement, but he's such a special scorer. But you know, Greg, I mean, it's one thing to be wind up one-on-one. That time they ran Klay Thompson off a screen. And you know, if they're having him negotiate screens while guarding Kyrie, I'm not mad at that. It fatigues him more, gives him a little bit more options. LeBron with the miss, the rebound to Draymond Green and knocked out of bounds. And Tristan woofing with Draymond right now. It is an 18 point ball game. And uh, if you can't beat him, Clutch and grab him, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and getting away with it, you know, even though, but it also shows you how difficult in the finals, the intensity level, the physicality of it. You got to fight through that mentally, and we've seen Kyrie here tonight do just that. Well, he knows that he's on, obviously, he feels that he's on this great role right now. He understands that he and LeBron have carried this team in their best moments up to this point, but they've gotten some other contributions tonight. And that's the difference. They've been waiting for these other guys to step up a little bit. Tristan Thompson, number one. Now, Stu, let me ask you about Kyrie Irving. Games one and two in Golden State, he was 18 of 45 from the field. 18 of 45 in just 43 points. Obviously erupted for 38 in game three. And, uh, uh, you know, just a sensational game here so far tonight. Where was this game from Kyrie Irving in those two games at Oracle Arena? Well, you know, he was having some matchup problems, I felt, with Clay Thompson. But listen, all that doesn't matter. I mean, the, the key point in all of these series, whether it's the finals or earlier rounds, at any point you can get a shift in confidence of one player. And let's fast forward here now and say that, you know, really fast forward, the Cavaliers win this game. It's going to be on the backs of LeBron and Kyrie. You don't think Kyrie's going to be a, a tough thing to handle in game five? I mean, he's gotten the confidence, you know, in game three, and it's carried through to this game as well and will continue if they're fortunate enough to win this game. Rick, I want to say this also. That's the benefit of watching video. It took them a game or two to figure out how they're playing me, what can I do, what can I get away with. The assistant coaches sitting down with him, working with him. They've made some adjustments. He's made adjustments to his game. And and also, quite frankly, he missed shots that we've seen him make consistently. Mm-hmm. Some of that is also on him. I, and I've always said, look, the truly greats in this league, Durant, Curry, you talk about LeBron, Kyrie, nice offensive there on that backdoor cut from Steph and finding Livingston there. But a lot of times, no matter what you game plan and do, you're not going to stop those guys. They're not going to stop Durant. They're not going to stop 
LeBron. LeBron. The question is, can you affect them enough to where you can win the basketball game? And that's what they did in games one and two. Kevin Love with an ill-advised pass there. Probably should have taken that mid-range. Jay looking for Jefferson. And back come the dubs. Three ball can make this a 13-point game. Draymond with a terrible pass to Sean Livingston. But that was actually good defense. And that's not a smart foul by Klay Thompson. You, if you're not going to be able to wrap LeBron up, you can't allow him to get the shot off if you're going to take the foul. But the activity defensively on the Draymond play, because before they weren't reacting. They were, you know, basing off the, the Cavs are basing what they did off of what you did. That time they initiated, they caught Draymond. He was expecting the back door to be open. Defense anticipated well, forced a turnover. That was Kevin Love, by the way, who yeah. had six steals last game. Winds up with the steal, pitch ahead, and now you got a chance for the three point play. Foul number three on Clay Thompson. And Stu, it seems like every time as LeBron completes the three point play, every time Golden State gets a little something going and they get it to 14 or 13 to 11, Cleveland answers right back with a haymaker. Yeah, they do, but it's they answer back as a result of turning the basketball over. I mean, yeah, the Warriors right now approaching the 10 turnover mark and it's not even halftime. And now Cleveland is sub five turnovers in the game, which has been one of the keys. Well, part of that, too, and you talked about this, Stu, is the fact that they have also now, that was almost a three seconds, very easily could have been called. But remember, Tyron Lue talked about this last year. It took them a few games to get a feel for the rhythm and the pace with which Golden State played. Because if you think about it, remember, only four turnovers in game one. Since then, they've started to get more deflections and get more turnovers. What's killed them is the fact that they haven't had other guys have an impact offensively. You talked about it, Rick. Their bench coming in this game shooting 27%. When your bench is there to score, when you look at guys like Corver and Channing Fry, these are guys that they need to make shots. If they're not making shots, they're not going to be an asset for you necessarily defensively. And the, the bench numbers for Cleveland were, were terrible. And the three-point shooting numbers for Cleveland were bad as well. 11 of 31 in game one, 8 of 29 in game two, 12 of 44 in game three. That's 31 of 104. That's 29.8%. They are above 60% from three-point range in this game. So uh, is Security. Shaq uh, sitting behind Shaq taking Van Gundy and job, Jackson. Man. But, uh, Stu, I believe in the principle of due. And maybe the Cavs were just due for a game like this. Well, yeah, you know, you, you mentioned the percentages that the Cavs were shooting from three. You know, 29% given how they shot the basketball the entire year. You knew if the series continued, it wasn't going to continue that kind of trend. And by the same token, the Warriors shooting at 42% for three for the series, and right now they're sitting at 33%. So we may be seeing a little bit of a correction here to some extent, but still, if you're the Warriors, we said the key to clinch night, uh, tonight, you had to cut down your turnovers. Mm -hmm. They were... 20 and 18 in turnovers the past two games. Tonight, they're already sitting close to 10. That's, they're not meeting the key to clinch there. We talked about dribble penetration. So far in this game, have they stopped pen, dribble penetration? They haven't. On LeBron and certainly not, not with, uh, with Kyrie. So, you know, right now, the Cavaliers are in, a, I think, a good position, not because of the score, but the way they're playing the game of basketball at this point. And the one advantage, though, Golden State has, and that's why game three was so critical. They're up 3 0. And so, even if they don't have one of their better games and somehow end up losing this, they still have to feel wow. good. You see LeBron knocking down those. They got 80 points in the first half. Mm -hmm. that, that's incredible. With a little over five minutes. Against this defensive team. With a little over five minutes to go, it was 69 49, and they haven't lost one point off that lead at that time. Livingston, no. Nice tap out by. Draymond Green and a runover foul. Iman Shumpert on that, Iguodala. That three might have counted if Steph Curry knocks that down because he was in the shooting motion there as that whistle was blown. That's a huge break in some respects for the Cavs. You see LeBron here, patience. And this is the area he has really improved his three-point shooting, Stu, particularly here in the postseason. Yeah, I mean, over the years, he's you know become a much better standstill three-point shooter at LeBron James, one triple-double away from passing Magic for most triple-doubles in finals history. They are tied at eight right now. And LeBron James not worried about 
notable historical statistics. He wants He's game, to get five, game Monday five Monday night. You hit it right on the head in, in, in his mind because, you know, you, you can say what you want. Being up 3-1, again, we talked about it at the top. That's where they were last year, and everyone's, oh, you're not going to beat them four in a row. You're not trying to win four in a row. You're just trying to win a game. Every game you win puts you in a better spot, and you see Kyrie there with the finish. His ability to attack. They, they really have done a good job. I think because of the execution early, Stu, they had Golden State in so many rotations that now they got them guessing. They're now a count late on their rotations in terms of coming with the help, and that's all a guy like Kyrie Irving needs is his ability to finish at the rim. But what surprises me, even equal dial on that play, have you seen the Warriors play worse defense? I mean, there was no rotation there at all. I mean, he's sort of standing there posing for a holy card. Um, you know, he's not really, they're not being aggressive in terms of their rotations like, we're, like we normally see. You just saw that graphic in the history. Most points in a first half in finals history. 83 authored up here by the Cleveland Cavaliers and counting. Kyrie trying to make it 86. Czar, based on the fact Cleveland has 83, are the Dubs lucky to even be down by 20 right now? I don't know if it matters with this team because they're so explosive. There you see a little drill penetration, bounce pass, easy let. Do you notice how many bounce passes they throw? Mm -hmm. They throw so many bounce passes. The bounce pass has almost become extinct in the league now. Everything is a lob to the rim, lob to the rim. Golden State throws bounce passes. And what is the advantage that creates? Well, it, it's it's not the norm any longer, and it's to me, it's it's a much more effective pass than the lob pass is, which can go awry. A guy, a lot of things can happen bad with a, a lob pass. The bounce pass more solid, I think. The lead is 21 for Cleveland, and they extend their NBA Finals record for points and a half to 86. KD, oh, he splashes Let me it. I'll tell you what, he's the one guy who's consistently showed up here in this first half offensively. It's not like Golden State's been horrible. They got 68 points in the half. But they trail by 18 because the big three for Cleveland doing their thing in game four.